Yo, what's going on Epic 7? I'm Sue and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 117. Floor 117 will have you facing off against Vivian. Her mechanics are pretty simple. She'll start the fight here with mana amplification to give herself an attack buff as well as an immunity buff and this lightning mana effect which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Throughout the fight, she's also accompanied by this carbuncle here who will use moves that kind of get rid of debuffs on her and also buff her up and give her more buffs like effectiveness buff or whatever have you, just random buffs throughout the fight. As long as Vivian has one or more buffs on her, her attacks do different things. So her basic attack, Vitality Drain, normally would be a single target attack, but if she has buffs, it's an AoE attack. And then Thunder God's Cry here, this is her AoE attack. This has the ability to stun somebody on your team, potentially multiple members, and it removes four souls. If... For whatever reason, she has multiple buffs. It can, can trigger multiple times, up to three times. And that is a lot of damage and potentially your entire team stun. Now, let's go back and talk about this lightning mana effect here. When an enemy uses a non-attack skill twice, dispels one debuff from the bearer before activating Thunder God's Cry. Essentially, every other non-attack skill you use causes Vivian to use the enhanced like AoE attack on your team for big damage and stuns you. So... To win, it's pretty simple. Just make sure that Vivian can never have buffs and try as hard as possible to never use non-attack skill characters, right? Got it? Good. Now, the last thing to talk about here is this Narcissist Mage on the first floor. He has this passive here, Identify Weakness. If you attack him with at least two attacks from a fire ally, he'll gain weakness exposed earth and he takes bonus damage from earth uh, allies. So if you want to play a primary green DPS to make this floor easier, you are welcome to do so. He also has this overflowing mana passive that gives mana spurt to all of the adds on his floor. So if you don't kill him within five turns, they're basically going to get supercharged and probably kill you very quickly. The thing is, though, the uh, Proud Sorcerer here, as well as these Gunfire Cannons, they're not immune to debuffs, which leads us to our team discussion. That's right. It's the return of the girl, Dollmaker Pearl Horizon here. Now, she does two amazing things for this floor. First off, Hypnosis is a sleep and a slow if you have your talent tree leveled, which means that you could kind of just completely bypass the first floor because all the boss does is just CR push allies. If they're all slept all the time and stunned from Dollmaker, then you don't ever have to worry about anything on the first floor. It just completely trivializes it. All you have to do is just burst it down within five turns and you're easy. Uh, you're on easy street, right? Super easy. Kind of just move along. Now, as for how we build her, Yellow Violin. This is so that on the second floor versus Vivian, then we can just kind of use attacks that will strip away her buffs and she can't have anything. And also the stun here on Dollmaker Pearl Horizon. We can use it on the Carbuncle so that, that way the Carbuncle can't buff Vivian. You basically just completely cut her off from buffs whatsoever with this one simple character. As for how we build her here, I'm on health percentage here on the necklace, effectiveness on the ring, and boots are speed. Make sure your effectiveness is over 85%. Now, for the tank, it's Adventure Raz for the obvious reason of Command Strike Soulburn being just absolutely broken. He's pretty much built the same way that we've used him throughout all of Abyss here. Aureus is our artifact, health percentage necklace, health percentage ring, boots are speed, effectiveness over 85%. For your primary damage dealer, you are free to play whatever you want. In the past, I have used characters such as, uh, let's see, Green Landy on my alternate account as a primary DPS. I don't think I have him here on this account, but Charles. Charles is particularly very good here on this floor because he does decent damage. And also, he does extra damage to enemies that have buffs and he strips them. So he is a fantastic option if you want to play him. But again, I've been using Lorena pretty much for the whole thing, so no reason to stop now. Still probably the strongest single target DPS in Abyss, Daydream Joker as the artifact, crit damage as the necklace, attack percentage ring, attack percentage boots. As always, have all of your skills level, level 66 star awoken. Now, the trickiest member of the team is the uh, subject of the healer. I am playing Inos 2.0 with the artifact Celestine because it is a main healer that gives a defense break and attack buff and speed up to my entire team. And I can sustain my entire team without using any non-attack skills, so I don't have to worry ever about Thunder God's Cry. If for some reason you just never pulled an Inos out of the uh, kind of Moonlight Summon, the Galaxy Summon, 
an alternative that you can choose is actually bomb model Kana on the artifact Bloodstone if you happens to have it. If you don't want to play Kana, you could also play Landy here if you got her as well on Bloodstone as your primary healer. If you have none of these options, if you don't own Celestine or you do not own uh, kind of uh, Bloodstone, your only real option at that point is to just play Tamarin and kind of suffer through it and just be very, very cautious about how you handle things. Basically, look at your box, get creative, find alternative ways to heal without using non-attack skills. As long as you can bring a team in with no non-attack skills, this fight is pretty trivial overall, in my opinion. As for how Inos is built, Celestine has to be the core artifact on the character. Health percentage necklace, health percentage uh, ring here, boots or speed, effectiveness over 85%. Got it? All right, let's jump into the fight. All right, so we can S3 here for the speed buff and the attack buff. Skill 3 for the defense. And then we go S2 here with Dollmaker to slow and sleep everything. And then we just go basic attack here on Narcissus Mage. We can stun the Sorceress here. All right, we can soul burn here on Roz. Skill three for the souls. Basic here on Inos. Just fish for a duel. All right, we can go soul burn here. Basic attack skill here again. We are push, but everybody's asleep, so who cares? Alright, we can see if we can blind this. Get that defense break, and then basic attack skill here. And we are on to Vivian. Super free, super easy. Thank you, Pearl Horizon. Alright, so Vivian's going to start here, and now we have to try to get those buffs, get rid of them as fast as possible. So let's speed up here with Inos. Alright, basic attack here with Roz, because remember, it is a strip. Get rid of one buff. Go S2 here, because it has a chance to strip from both the Carbuncle and Vivian. And then just attack Vivian. All right, we could try to remove this buff. Got it. Uh, let's go basic attack here. And then we'll go basic attack here. Full burn here on Roz. Didn't get it, sadly. All right, let's go S3 for the souls. Basic attack. Done this so that that way Vivian can't get boss from it. And then we can soul burn here. Alright. Alright, let's hit here. Alright, try to strip Vivian. Got it. Let's skill three for the souls here. Basic here. Alright, let's try to sleep the carbuncle. Alright, we'll go basic attack here for the defense break. Didn't get it. Alright, let's do this. And then defense break here. S3, and this will push phase here and summon the second carbuncle. Alright, so she's going to get her buffs back now. So let's go basic attack here. Strip one. Beat up here on Inos. Basic attack skill here to strip immunity. Basic attack here on Lorena. Alright, we could try to blind Vivian, I guess. 
that they got stunned here. All right, go for defense break here on Vivian. Didn't get it. Just basic attack here. Uh, just fish for a duel, I guess. Try to get a defense break. Got it. Kill three. And there you go. Abyss 117 in a nutshell. Like I said, this floor is trivially easy if you try to play a healer that doesn't use non-attack skills. This is one of the reasons why from last like month or two for the new player guides, I've been championing Inos 2.0 because she's very good in a lot of situations like this floor in particular. And when we move on to the Challenge Abyss series, you'll see that she's also exceptional there. So this is a pretty good time to invest in her if you haven't done so already. Only real sticking point is that you need that five-star artifact Celestine. Hopefully you took one with a selector or you've pulled one off of the Covenant Summons up until this point. Otherwise, like I said, you have to get creative with things like Bloodstone or just simply rely on a good old Tamarin. But again, I just personally think non-attack skill healers are the way to go on this floor. Again, you could see how easy this run went. If you have any more questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments below and post other clears that you may have used or done this floor with that I didn't cover here. Give your fellow players extra suggestions as always down in the comments below. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 118. Later now.